Yes, Hake is live. What's up, guys? I am connecting right now. You should be seeing me. I am James Hake. This is the Hake Report. It is Thursday already, June 18th, 2020. And I have calls to get to and some stories to talk about. The charging of this, these, this officer and these officers. The propaganda surrounding it. It's so ridiculous. And these blacks in power are a joke. The women, too. And the SCOTUS decision, the Supreme Court of the United States. I'm not a fan of the term SCOTUS, but that's what they use. And uh, beware of the militia. So let's get on with the show. One, two, three, four. Oh. What's up, guys? I hope you enjoyed the beautiful music, courtesy of Trevor Wesley. He did a, that was a new rendition. Well, he did a rendition of the original song, The Hake Report, by AJ Gallardo. <laughs> hey, George, thank you for joining over on Facebook. Thank you for got ladies and er gentlemen for joining on Periscope. So, YouTube is dumb. They are promoting... Black Lives Matter and so-called racial justice, which is a political thing. It's not justice. They're not for what's right. And it just reminds me of what Bolton, John Bolton, the disgusting rhino who hates Trump, um, claimed in his book that Trump is pushing, you know, the Justice Department or the law enforcement issues with a political mind. No, that's what he does. And that's what these people do. These are these people don't believe in what's right. They believe in politics and politics Their political ends are what's quote-unquote right to them. It's their religion. That's why that friend of mine blocked the hate report on uh, Instagram, which uh, After I went and I gave an LOL to a black square because somebody posted it on Blackout Tuesday a few weeks ago whenever it was Supporting Black Lives Matter, and this guy is like an Americanized Mexican, and he doesn't even like black people, <laughs> and he's pretending that he's supporting this. And I just put an LOL, but he, since he believes in this stuff, and he, and like our friends, all of our mutual friends think I'm a Nazi. It's so ridiculous. These people aren't for what's right, and YouTube, like likewise, is not for what's right. But I appreciate them because we're able to put out. Jesse's truthful message on the platform and reach many people It's been great and D live and other other platforms as well. So right on um, But it's so ridiculous racial justice is not justice and it's so silly This cop has been charged and I will get to your calls. I will get to your calls <laughs> Oh my gosh the female complaining That is going on so much in the country. It seems like stress levels are high with people. And when I say stress levels, I just mean that people are so weak right now. And you can easily lose a friend. So uh, be wise in your, in your words, right? In your tongue. Tame the tongue. And uh, Apple Calendar is reminding me that Juneteenth is tomorrow. <laughs> Juneteenth is when, um, I guess in Texas... They read on June 19th, 1860-something or something, that uh, the Emancipation Proclamation. So that's when the slaves who were supposedly in Texas found out that they were freed. They had been freed. Crazy. Um, what's up, first name, last name? He was, he was criticizing me. On <laughs> and he was also trolling the Bond Rebuilding the Man YouTube stream, too. We did stream it. Sunday service, Bond Sunday service from 2009, talking about the failure of the black church. And he pointed, Jesse Lee Peterson, in that service, he pointed out that this is a spiritual principle that applies to all people. 
And so he, he's not that familiar with white churches. But if it's going on in white churches, which it is, it is, you got you to gotta leave these fake churches. So um, it's insane. The cops have been charged in Atlanta. In this case, I'm sure all of you know probably, in Atlanta in which a black guy, 27-year-old, father of supposedly four but he's a stepfather of one, I think, if I remember correctly. This guy named Rayshard Brooks, a black guy. And they put, like, the most flattering pictures of him on TV. They don't, they try not to show the ones where he looks kind of thuggish. I don't know if there are any. I think that there are, <laughs> but I could be wrong. But um, this is the Ferguson Effect Part 2, because this guy... He was asleep in the drive-thru at Wendy's, Friday night, 11 p.m., 11.30 p.m., right? And the cops come and knock on the door He's on his window of his car. He's sleeping in his car. The peop- Somebody called 911 on him. I think a black woman called 911. He black. She's like, I can't wake him up. She tried to wake him up. The cops had to pound on the window, open the door to wake him up. He was all groggy, groggy there talking to him and having him do the sobriety test for 42 minutes or however long. And then he's all supposedly cordial, <laughs> according to the DA, the black DA of, of Atlanta, who's turning on the cops. And then suddenly as they're cuffing him, because he is indeed failing the sobriety test, allegedly, right? Well... He suddenly starts resisting arrest, acting like a freak, and the two guys can't handle him. And as Earl proudly bragged about his the, his favorite um, black criminal of the day, he beat their butts. <laughs> he kicked their butts. <laughs> this black guy, he kicked them all off. He grabbed the taser out of one cop's hand and ran off and tried to tase and then got shot in the back as he was, like, right after or as he was reaching back to to fire the taser at them and you know tasers have 15 foot range supposedly but he was 18 feet away like the cop is going to count oh since you're three feet further than the than the range then i should be fine i don't need to shoot at you (laughs) ridiculous and so the the dumb black da district attorney is listing off all these things and talking about how they acted afterwards oh they kicked him Oh, they didn't render aid for two whole minutes. <laughs> two minutes, that's a long time. I mean, that's not that long of a time, especially after this guy freaking, I said freaking, uh, fought off, fought you off and all that madness. And then supposedly, I think he did try to help. Um, <laughs> one of the cops did try to help. But uh, he was standing on his shoulder because you don't know if he's down or hurt or dead or going to get up again and fight. People are... Crazy. He just fought off two cops who were trying to hold him down, arrest him. Crazy. So, by the way, they, okay, so they lost, one of them lost his job right away. He was fired on Saturday. This took place Friday, fired on Saturday. What a shame for doing his job. And then I think the other one was on administrative leave. Now both of them are charged, one with 11 counts, the guy Rolf. And the other one is charged with like two counts, violating his oath of <laughs> his oath to serve and protect or something stupid. It's so ridiculous. And felony murder is one of the charges against the first guy. And now they're trying to cast it like the second officer is betraying the first, which it looks to me like that's not true. It looks like to me like they're trying to make it look like the first officer's action was so horrendous, egregious, that the second just had to cross that thin blue line to, uh, in a rare action, to testify against his partner. Yeah, right. I doubt it. It sounds like propaganda to me. But the media is all over this. They make sure you know that they're white cops. They make sure to say white cop. When it's a black perp on a white victim, they never say black. Very rarely do they say, oh, it's a black suspect. They say it was a teen, teens. <laughs> Or whatever. American. Whatever. They say all kinds of different things. When it's an immigrant, they say it's an American. When it is, uh, sometimes when there's foreigners, these foreign, um, 
children of migrants, Muslims, commit terror attacks in these other countries, European countries. They say, French man committed blah blah blah, <laughs> or whatever. I don't know if they use the term French, but they've used different things like that. German, whatever. But it usually it's actually like these children, second generation. The second generation is more radical than the first. And then they end up committing these terror attacks. Happens in the United States too. And then they say, oh, Americans are more likely to commit the terror attacks than the Muslims. Even though the Muslims are, they're like less than 3% of the population, I think. Thank God, right? Because once they get above 10 or 20%, that's when they get real violent and in, entitled. These blacks in power and these women, liberal women and liberals and rhinos, they're a joke. I was watching this conference in which, or news conference, right, in which they were announcing these charges against these two white cops in Atlanta. And these people are acting like they take themselves so seriously. It's so phony. I was reading the Skim article. I've told you about the Skim before. It is a far left, female oriented, written by females, daily news update that you can get in your email inbox, right? So if you, uh, if you subscribe, tell them Hake sent you. <laughs> I don't necessarily recommend it, but I get it just to find out what ridiculous things are going on that they're promoting. And they, for example, I found out from the skim that it was Mental Health Awareness Month in, what was that, May or April or whatever? <laughs> Mental Health Awareness Month. That's the kind of stuff that I learned from the skim. And they were so deceptive about this stuff. They were talking about Trump. Um, they were talking about Trump. And then they said they disagreed with Trump by saying, oh, but the Republicans don't agree with Trump. They're addressing police brutality and police reform. The rhinos are fake. Shame on the rhinos for giving credence. And honestly, like, Trump, sh in my opinion, I don't... I, wish kind of that he would not have, or I'm leery about the fact that he signed this police reform executive order because it gives credence to the notion that the cops are the problem and they're not. They just aren't. Very deceiving of the mainstream media, the skim, and the rhinos. And the rhinos are giving false, no false credence to this phony notion of racism when the problem is white cowardice and black anger. White kissing up to the blacks, and blacks wanting to be kissed up too. It reminds me of, and then I will get to your calls, I have this friend who doesn't seem to want to be my friend right now <laughs> anymore, <laughs> unless I apologize to him for doing nothing wrong. And so I refuse to, but it reminds me of these blacks wanting an apology, wanting these whites taken down, it's just this unreasonable anger that they want to be kissed up to, but they're never going to be happy. It reminds me of my wife if I had one, as, as the saying goes, right? As Jesse Lee Peterson so frequently says. It's true. These people are never going to be happy. It reminds me of what Joel has pointed out with this thing and what, you know, common sense people who are just un, unattached onlookers are looking at with these taking down of these monuments. What is that going to do? Nothing. Why are you so focused on it? Because you're evil? Because you're unhappy people? These people that want to take down the monuments? They're miserable people. And the people who are kissing up to them are also miserable people, including Nikki Haley, who took down the Confederate flag. Scapegoating the whites. Scapegoating so-called history. And it's a caricature of history anyways. These people with their communist version of history that America was based on, was founded on slavery and genocide. That's the common refrain by the communists. It's not by people who love America. These people don't have any love for America or white people or one another themselves. They're just miserable, angry people that are always going to be unhappy. And it's only going to get worse. It reminds me, and then I will get to calls of when I've heard Jesse Lee Peterson say this so many times that it's only going to get worse. It's, it's um, not that it's only going to get worse, but we haven't seen anything yet in this 
craziness, this attack on Trump and attack on what's right and Christians and whites, because they want, they're trying like hell, because they are from hell. They're, they're listening to the people from hell, to the spirits from hell, um, to get rid of the great white hope, right? To get rid of Trump. Remember last year, wasn't it so quaint when last year around this time, I feel like, they impeached President Trump? That was so quaint and peaceful times, right? Because look at things right now. Riots around the country for over the last few weeks. Around the country. And around the world, honestly. Over this fake version of, uh, this fake notion that, oh, Black Lives Matter is a real, it was a real concern. And they're kissing up to Black Lives Matter as though they have any legitimacy at all. They don't, but because they're, they're kosher to the mainstream, they support transgender, homosexuality, destruction of the family, um, fake black victimhood, fe feminism, all these anti-Christian, anti-white, anti-family, anti-men things, then uh, they get the green light from the mainstream. Everything evil. And the mainstream, I mean, not just the media, not just the social media, not just the Democrats, but also the rhinos. And uh, the worldwide, it's crazy. Not just the corporations. So, it's a mess. But didn't you, didn't you notice that, oh, they were not going to impeach him. Yep, they did. Oh, they're not going to riot around the country. Yep, they did. You thought, I kind of thought that Black Lives Matter it was... Had its, had its 15 minutes of fame back on the Obama days because Trump does not give play to Black Lives Matter, to his credit. To this day, he doesn't. He didn't even mention racism, so-called racism, in his Supreme Court, no, his Supreme Court, in his um, executive order. I'm going to get to the Supreme Court. But it's, uh, it's kind of interesting times. Don't be dismayed, though. Um... Shout out to Asmador hosting the Hake Report. Appreciate it. Dark Side of the Bear What says Noah He Blue, referring to Noah's Arkansas, who gave a Ninja Gini and said, and Ninja Gini is on D Live, right? Supporting. People are supporting on D Live.tv slash the Hake Report. Follow me there. Get me to a thousand followers. Right on. He said, if you're watching on YouTube, come follow Hake on D Live so we can get him past 1K, 1,000, and on track to VP, verified partner. Not the gay kind, but a partner on D Live. It's uh, beneficial, right? Beneficial for everybody. Beard the Butcher says, God bless James Hake. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. And Asmador gave a ninja guinea as well and says, BLM has close ties to Hugo Chavez. They don't care about oppression. They just want to control it. Yeah. They're the most oppressive people. Asmador gave a diamond and I said, I meant Maduro, LOL. <laughs> not, not Chavez, maybe. Maduro. Interesting. Crazy times, right? It's, it's actually kind of fun. Jib Jab says, wait for it, but just stay clear of the people so that you, uh, of the, crazy people so that you stay safe, right? Be wise. Jib Jab says, wait for it. King Alpha Nerd says, isn't getting rid of Aunt Jemima defeating the purpose of Black Lives Matter? Aunt Jemima, her real name was, wasn't it something like Nancy Green? I looked it up. I think I told you guys about it yesterday. I know I did, actually. And she was a freed slave and she got a job in 1890 to represent Aunt Jemima. Be the caricature of Aunt Jemima. And then they started getting all, kissing up to the blacks, getting rid of the supposedly racist stereotypes, which just means the way blacks were with the handkerchief over, around their head and all that stuff. Spoiler alert says, fun fact, John Bolton's mustache has a higher clearance than the mayor of Atlanta. Interesting. <laughs> King Alpha Nerd says, did you hear about the Kroger's Karen who stopped a black woman from leaving the parking lot? They are calling it racism. Interesting. I had not heard about that. Crazy. John X15 says, Not guilty. Taser is considered a deadly weapon. And the dummy blat even made this claim prior to, to prior, not to mention it is state law. What a racist DA. Yeah, this, this black district attorney 
had even made the claim on camera. You heard, you saw it on the Jesse Lee Peterson show. Look at this guy pretending that he's noble and deserves to be in that office. <laughs> what a joke. What a joke. Tabor, Jay Eaton. I think I'm pronouncing your name right because I think spoiler alert told me how to pronounce it. Tabor. I kept on calling it Tabor. Tabor. Jay Eaton says, hard to watch the Australian girl assault, SMH. Is that the one where she was sitting like in the subway or on a bench and they, she kept on looking away and they just kept on punching her? Yeah, those things are hard to watch. It's crazy. If you guys don't already, it, check out um, Colin Flaherty. He's been on the Jesse Lee Peterson show many times. He himself calls Jesse Lee Peterson the most important man in America. And he was one of the first who's been banned from YouTube repeatedly to the point where he's no longer even trying to be on YouTube. Colin Flaherty, a journalist, independent-minded journalist, independent journalist. And he documents black on white crime, black mob violence, black on Asian, black on handicapped, black on elderly. All that madness because it's, it's undocumented by the mainstream media. Oh, you see it in local media, but the mainstream looks the other way. But if somebody in uh, the Boogaloo movement or the militia pretend like they're going to they say something edgy like or say something that uh, is ill-advised, like, oh, when the looting starts, starts, the shooting starts, the target practice. They say stuff like that, right? The militia, some militia people, supposedly, allegedly, right? This is according to Washington Post. They make sure to document that, but when blacks commit actual violence, oh, no. Teens. <laughs> if they even mention it. A. Owen says, McChicken or Big Mac? Huh. Depends on my... Are you asking me? <laughs> Appreciate it. Depends on my taste for the day. But, um... Only lettuce, tomato, and grilled onions only. I do not like pickles, no mayo, no ketchup, no mustard, no relish, no Thousand Island, no secret sauce, um, and things like that. I don't like olives either. Although if you cook them enough and have them diced up small enough and spread out and mixed with a bunch of other things, you can trick me into eating it. <laughs> Henuv Yurslavangi says... Gave a sticker, I think. Hold on. It's a baby lemon looking up to our lemon character standing in a superhero position. <laughs> That's the description of it. Appreciate the sticker. Thank you, guys. And uh, Army Ann says, thanks, Hake, crew, and mods. Asador says, everybody stay home this weekend. Juneteenth is Friday, and it will be crazy this year. Yeah. Be alert when you're out, because... People are evil, and uh, don't get caught up in the emotions so that you do something crazy and ill-advised, right? Because they're not gonna, they're gonna cast everything that the right does, that the decent people do, that the whites do, in the worst possible way. You learned that at Charlottesville if you didn't learn it at all, if you hadn't known that already. Charlottesville, Virginia, where the alt-right and whites in general and maybe some normal nationalists, civic nationalists, as they call them, people who aren't even into race, necessarily, who just don't like seeing our s statues and monuments be taken down and smeared all in the name of fake imaginary racism, which is not black's problem. Um, they had the right to peacefully protest, but the, the mayor was against them, the cops did not protect them or keep the group separated from Black Lives Matter and Antifa and the crazy people and violence broke out and the alt-right had the right to defend themselves but they accused the alt-right of being the bad guys when in general they were not they were not the aggressors but somebody got killed and now they say oh since somebody got killed you can't say there were very fine people on both sides <laughs> you heard that that guy thomas who's like pretty reasonable and then i will get to calls like this guy he's a nice he's a nice black guy right but he's so wrong about this situation where um just because the whites said jews will not replace us right the whites are upset that the that the people in power are bringing in 
all these immigrants who are making babies like crazy, and the whites aren't making babies, and uh, all that stuff is, is a mess. They are, uh, they're evil. And then you have, <laughs> and don't be, uh, don't be provoked by evil people like, or trolls or whatever you want to call them, but like Marcus Jones. I can't believe that he's, he really believes this, but he says, Confederates lost. Tearing down Confederate statues is the right thing to do. And he puts these sunglasses like he thinks he's cool, and popcorn like he wants to see the drama. He doesn't really have real courage or love of what's right to, uh, be about what's right. Adam Clark says, Hey, hey, thank you so much for standing up for the beautiful Confederate flag. I love that flag. Much love, brother. Yeah, it's only right. They are scapegoating. You know, scapegoating? Scapegoating is what Hitler, I learned, did to the Jews. That's what I learned in um, school. He scapegoated the Jews, right? The Nazis did that because they were blaming the Jews for the, the, the problems facing Germany, and there were many. Germany was treated very badly, right, after World War I and II. And so they were, the Jews were scapegoated, right? Now they're scapegoating the whites and the South, who are the most decent people in the country. And uh, it's such a shame that Abraham Lincoln, right, whatever you think of Abraham Lincoln, he fought and, a lo and died. He died too. And 650,000 Americans on both across both sides, I think, died all to unite the country. Some were trying to break away. They had the right to try to break away, but they fought, they died, and that was to unite the country, and Lee was not called a treasonous person, but these idiots called him a traitor, and they're the ones who are traitors. It's disgusting. Spoiler alert says, mostly peaceful subway riders. <laughs> Referring to those blacks who attacked that, um, that white girl. I think she should have fought back. I don't know. Seems like if you at least try to fight back, you, you won't get as beaten. Because that weakness really attracts even worse abuse by these people who've no doubt been abused by their mothers. Right? Mothers. They can't, I can't imagine they had fathers if they're treating people like that. At least not decent ones. Anyways, I gotta get to some calls. Chris in Arizona. Chris, thanks for calling. What's up? Hi, James. Hey. Great show. Great Thank show. you. It's getting better and better. Um, I'm so busy at work lately, though. And um, so I miss some of it. I catch some of it, you know, and then. That's how um, I always I was. Jesties. Yeah. Yeah. So I was wondering if uh, you and the. Um, Manhood Hour has answered Jesse's uh, question yet. I, I missed Manhood Hour, hour yesterday. Which, which was Jesse's question? I'm blanking on it right now. Uh, oh, no, would I you lay down your life for it. your enemy? He has not asked oh, me that yet. I have not answered that question yet. <laughs> I noticed. <laughs> I noticed. So what would you do? I, you, you know, have an answer? I don't have an answer. I think that I wouldn't. Not that I yeah. think that it's right that I wouldn't. But I just don't, I don't know. I don't yeah. see me doing that. <laughs> because, uh, I think I have, um, I think I have a little ways to go before I'm, like, full-on, full-blown Christian. Right? I'm not, I don't think I'm a Christian yet. Like, the real kind, I mean. Well, I'm surprised, because I, I believe you are. Remember the first week that you went off of Jesse's and went on your own? You, you had a Bible phrase, and you spoke about that. I don't remember it now, because it was quite a while ago. Uh, but you um, gave your thoughts on what you thought it meant, or your own um, commentary on it, and I thought it was great. So when you go to two hours, you should do stuff like that, whether you feel Christian or not. All right. I, I appreciate that. Really good. Yeah, I still promote Christianity. It's Christianity is the right thing, I think, because just look at the people who are Christians, the real Christians, I mean. They're... Uh -huh. All of the people that I actually respect are Christians, they're conservatives, they love America, they don't want the Confederate flag taken down, <laughs> they uh, support Trump. I love the look of that Confederate flag. I Me too. It. It's, it's so ever cool looking. Ever since I was a kid. Right. Ever since I was a kid, I love the way it looked. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, did you grow up with um, Dukes of Hazard? Sure did. Yeah, me too. <laughs> And that those were decent people, shows. I think. That was one of the shows my parents and the whole family watched. Right. See, we didn't watch all the garbage, like what was uh, different strokes, and um, there were different movies that my parents didn't. Let different us strokes watch. was garbage. <laughs> well, I don't know whether it was garbage or not. I watched. Wasn't it that the one with it. Arnold where he's all? What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> that's right. That's that was right. pretty it wholesome. Was so much fun. And we had watched one of the episodes of my little sister poured water in my, uh, Kathy and my bed, our, we're twins. Uh-huh. My, my little sister Judy poured water in our beds. Because wow. Of that episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where, where, uh, copycat uh, crime. It was like the pee, the pee in the bed episode. Yeah. Where, um, whatever, <laughs> uh, what, what's the little guy's name? I, Arnold. I can't remember his name. Arnold. So that was one of the few times we just happened to watch that mo- that show, and my mom was like, "See why we don't watch this?" It's kind a of bad stuff. example. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> yeah, for a while, my brother had a temp- my little brother had a temper tantrum problem. Right, he would get uh-huh. a temp- he would hit us. He was like six, seven years old, younger than me, but he would like hit us multiple times like this, and it, well, like we would laugh, but. Um, my mother made us stop watching Batman the animated series for a little while because of that. But, you know, Aww. parents parents I think they don't realize that they're the problem, not the TV shows necessarily. Yeah, right. Anyways. It was just a thing. It was just a thing, yep. you know. So, our mom made Kathy and I stay up until we changed our own bed covers. Wow. You know, our parents, both of them side by side. It was the first well, time you we can't, ever made our own bed. You can't blame them for that one because no, you can't. It was good, and we. Yeah. But I was throwing a fit. I was like, "This isn't." It fair. wasn't your fault. Yeah, he's the one that did it. Yeah, <laughs> you know why are you making us change our bed? It's about time you learned how to change a bed. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, my sister Kathy, she sent me "I Love Boomer" merch. Nice, Boomer. right on. <laughs> I do love and, boomers. Boomers yes. are, you know, anybody who's reviled unjustly. I uh, I back them up. I think. I think. I generally try to, anyways. Yeah. So that's pretty courageous of you. Yeah. It's really because crazy. it's it's too. I mean, for one, y- yes, the right wing have their valid criticisms of boomers, but the left wing is extremely trendy to hate boomers right now, and they're hating them because they're mostly white. That you know, the left is mostly um, mo- a little bit mo- more sane and cons- and conservative, even though they're not really that conservative. But they're a little bit more less insane, let's call it. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, they're they hated. It's trendy. The, right, the left doesn't have. They yeah. Lack what the left doesn't have, and that's common sense. Yep. I appreciate that. Right on. I'm, I send a picture of the I Love Boomers swag if you can. I will. What I plan to do is uh, set, uh, have Cassie um, hold it up and take a picture of her and send it to you. Cool. Appreciate but, it, Chris. You know. All right. Thanks for taking my call, James. All right. You take care. Have a good day. You All as right, well. Bye. Bye. Uh, <laughs> Joel says, "Interesting. Why they never brought up the intentions to put up put blacks in a good light with that Aunt Jemima syrup, and that's so true. And she got a job. She used to be a slave. It's a beautiful story." Bring back Aunt Jemima with all of the stereotypes. The stereotypes are what's fun about black culture. I was watching Tyler Perry the other day. It's full of stereotypes. What are you talking about? (laughs) And these stereotypes are beautiful. They're funny. They're cute. The stereotypes, the negative stereotypes that that you see anymore are these stereotypes of the racist police. That the media promotes. False stereotypes, by the way. Anyways, I gotta get to Skip. He's been on hold for a while and wanted to talk to me. Skip out of Augusta, Georgia. What's up? Hey, hey, what's going on with you? Not much. What's going on with you? Well, look at here. I got a couple of things. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, talk a little bit about this black situation first. All right. And then I'll get, then I'll get on to my personal note with uh, Jesse. That sounds uh, wise. Yeah, okay. Um, do you, I know you're too young to have seen it when it originally come out, and I am too, but when I was a kid, The Little Rascals was a real popular TV yeah. show. Yeah. You watch that? I watched a little bit of it. It wasn't on TV as much as Dukes of Hazards, the uh, 
Three Stooges and stuff like that. Monsters. Well, if, you, if you go if you go on YouTube, you can you can catch just about every episode. Okay. And they and they uh, you know, they portrayed the blacks as being you know goofy and dumb and and you know just in all kind of ways, and it and it, it was fun. You know, it was right. Fun. Yeah, you know, we knew they really what we we know they really not like that. Most of them ain't. Right. Some of them ain't. You know, but and just ain't your mama just syrup crap. Yeah. Good karma. Well, what is this about? The blacks don't have anything better to do or try to better their lives and just complain about some syrup or some Uncle Ben, huh? Yeah, it's more yeah, than the blacks. It's this. It. It's these. There's these dumb reporters. These are very subversive people. They hate America. They want to destroy. Every remnant of decent America. These are remnants of back when America was decent. All, all these things like Quaker Oats and, well, Quaker Oats owns Aunt Jemima, I guess. And all these well, things, yeah. they're a throwback to when Americans were, t were together. They weren't, the, it wasn't so pushed in the mainstream, this, um, dis this discord, this, um, these people that just want to be miserable and so now people who want to be miserable and want everybody else to be miserable are being pushed to the front and they're uh they're so miserable in themselves that they can't stand to see an aunt jemima that just means that they're full we, of hate we used to have in the front yard and a lot of people had them uh, a little black man with a, a lantern in his hand. All it right. Was a, it was a like a lawn jockey. And, uh, yeah, nobody thought anything about it. You know? Right. Nothing was racial about it. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's just they just they just take it to extremes. Yeah. And if we and if we start if we start giving them one thing, they gonna want more, and they already want more, and they want you never will satisfy them. It's a yeah. You never will satisfy a black person. You keep giving them. Give them they want more. Look at the crazy ass list in Seattle up there. The crazy <laughs> list of demands that they want. Yeah. Unreal things. Things that you know that God will you ain't never gonna get, but you're gonna ask for it anyhow. It's and because it's because their souls are black. They're just miserable people. That's what liberals are. You know that women are more free more likely to be depressed, I think. That's I think that's what I heard. They're more depressed now than ever. They're more miserable now than ever because they're more liberal. They're more dark in their minds and in their spirits than ever. That's why well, they're never happy. I'll tell you this, Hake, and I guarantee you just about everybody in chat will, will agree. You feel better when you buy stuff for yourself, when you work and you, you pay for stuff instead of stuff being given to you or yeah. you're asking for stuff or expecting stuff. When you get out and work for it and pay for it, and, and you take, you also take care of things better that way too. And you know what, you man? Make, you make it last. You're also you're also happier and better, and more um, confident and jo have actual like joy when, in the face of stuff that you don't like, you get over it. You, uh, yeah. for example, like YouTube taking down my video. If I get mad about it, I'm miserable. If I I'm happy regardless of what happens, then I'm happier. And you have you you get better rather than bitter, <laughs> as the saying goes. You don't let you don't let situations dictate how you going you gonna live your life. How right. You're act from day to day. Yep. These they, people are they, control they, freaks. They want to control the world around them, but they're out of control themselves. If they do something that's uh that's not beneficial for you, you know you you got a choice. Yep. You need to dwell on it and cuss them all day long and go to bed at night cuss them and, and never get anything done. Or you can just say, well, look, I'm, I don't have any control over this. This is how they feel. So be it. And go on, go on with your life. Yeah, although they don't really have... dwell on that stuff. They don't really have that choice because they are, um, you know, when you're when you're insane with anger... You keep on mulling over, you can't help but keep on mulling over and thinking about, oh, the injustice of it all, and you're blind to reality. So you can't just, you can't help but just get over it. You can't get over it. <laughs> you, why, why can't you? I don't know, but that, but if they, if they could, I think that they, if they had the wherewithal, I think that they might. Well, if, if, 
I think you people know, are I, I, people are more insane than you give them credit for. I think. Well, all right, man. Let's, let's get off that and get on the Jesse real quick. All okay. right. What do you, you want to complain about? Do you remember? Do you remember when I called you? I, it's probably two or three times back. You said, "Well, you want to ask Jesse about that? You want to ask Jesse about that?" And I, <laughs> I said you, it like that too. I, told you, I said, "You, you want to ask that. Jesse about that?" <laughs> and I yeah. told you, I said, "Well." Well, Jesse gets me off that phone like 90 going north. He's scared I'm going to say Jew or something, so he won't let me talk no more. You remember that conversation? <laughs> I remember you saying that. You should get right, right to well, it then because uh, well, I, you answered the biblical question. I don't know. Maybe he just gets this weird vibe from you. Like you want to. I don't know what he gets. But I know he saw, he looked down and saw what my call was about answering the biblical question. Okay. And he said, I said, I said, how you doing, Jesse? He says, oh, all right, how you doing? Oh, if I felt any better, I'd pinch myself and then a little spill. All right. You know, just a little break the ice kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And next thing I know, I'm, I'm talking to a dead lion. He done hung up on me. <laughs> you know, I was ready to answer. Did you, an did you, answer, the, did you answer the biblical question? No, I didn't get, I didn't get oh, that all far. Right. All right. I don't know, so, man. So I'm going... So but you should go right next here. time. Next time you call so him, go right to it. it because I'm not you're a gonna, I'm not gonna, a, his mind gonna, reader, and you do have a gonna, you do have an issue with you have an issue with him where you like res, you resent him for some reason, right? And you shouldn't him. talk you know, to me about Jesse. it, huh? I respect Jesse. Jesse, I, I really, really respect Jesse. I, I know, I, but I, then, I but do. there's there's something going on because you're acting like you read his mind because you say, oh, he's scared I'm going to say something about the Jews. That indicates that... I'm just that, kidding with you about that. You know I'm kidding with you. Know, I, used to, I don't know I used if you're to kidding. Talk about, <laughs> I used to talk about joke Jews all the time. I know. That. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. yeah. But uh, now I know he ain't worried about it. He, he don't even know who I am. So I, he I know knows who you are. Me. I mean, I know I, he knows you. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, listen, man. Listen here. Listen, yeah. listen. Since you're the one that told me last time we talked, you said, well, you need to call Jesse. You need to call Jesse. Well, I did call Jesse, and I didn't get a chance to, to uh, answer the biblical question, so you're going to give me <laughs> at least three minutes, okay? Two minutes, all right? Man. Ask, ask but me. You're, ahead, you're, ask acting like ask you're acting entitled. Like you're acting. Ask, ask, ask him like again. You call him again. Him. Call him at the office and leave a message if you're if you're that upset about it because – I don't know what's no, going I'm on. I'm not upset about it. <laughs> I'm not upset about it, but I just, I want but to But you're call calling me about it. Because you told me, call Jesse. Call, call him Jesse. again then. Call him again and go right to it. <laughs> I ain't but, it but to me, I think that it's just needless drama. Yeah, I know it. I know it. I know it. I'm I just, think you might yeah, be going through you something where you're, you're not fun to talk to or you're not like deep to talk to anymore. So maybe it's something that, that has to do with that. I'm not deep. I don't know. I'm just I'm just throwing possibilities out there. I'm just throwing out suggestions. Mm, okay. Well, all right. I if you want, you, but you should really, you should just. I don't, if I get, see if I get deep. If you want to, hey, he'll, listen, he'll, skip. He'll think of me as an think of me as an intellectual. But you are an intellectual. <laughs> Man, I ain't got an eighth grade education. I'm from I know, Bill but, Jordan, but that's the, I, some people be are still intellectuals. People are you're either intellectual or you're spiritual. Are you spiritual? I got a spirit. Yeah. See? But spirit but spiritual, you know. Right. That's a that's a vague that's a big wide question. I can answer that in many kind of ways. You could yeah. be spiritual. But no, I just thought I'd call That's you. That's the best way I can express it. That's the best way I can express yeah. it. Anyways, Skip, good to hear I'd from you. you. All right, hey, you take care now. All right, you as well. Right. Dan says, homelessness is out of control in Inglewood, California. <laughs> More than just that. Oh, my gosh, but that's true. But politicians are too busy building sports cathedrals. Face palm. Say, shaking my head. Yeah. Homelessness is way out of control here in all up and down the coast, west coast of the United States. It's a mess. And yeah, I heard we are building a, a sports cathedral, as he calls it, uh, in Inglewood. What a mess. Jib Jab says, I'm going to throw a hypothetical out there. It could be possible the Quaker Oats wanted to take out the Aunt Jemima and they soup 
relabel day soup with a new image be day afraid to do it in fear of being labeled a racist now they can yeah so they had to call Aunt Jemima racist in order to get rid of Aunt Jemima they didn't want to get rid of Aunt Jemima without calling her racist so they can't people can't call them racist interesting appreciated jib jab that's almost as hard to read as Aunt Jemima's old um old uh advertisements philosopher with a diamond thank you I'm going to get to Nick and Mays, but real quick, let me cover this SCOTUS DACA decision. It's disgusting. The Supreme Court of the United States, I guess it was today, they decided 5-4 to four with John Roberts siding with the far-left liberals that, uh, the Trump, that President Trump can't get rid of DACA, which is Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, which is supporting, allowing illegal aliens to stay here without enforcing the law and deporting them, which is Obama's admitted to, he admitted it himself, it was an unconstitutional action. He said that he couldn't do it himself. Congress has to do it, but then he just up and did it himself. And everybody just said, you can't do that. And then they let him do it. (laughs) Cowards. Because he's black. And liberal. They didn't want to look like racist, so they didn't impeach the guy. I almost said what Rashida Tlaib said, (laughs) because it just rolls off your tongue. Rashida Tlaib said, we're going to, about Trump, to her son, and she repeated this in some bar or something, we're going to impeach the M. Blinker. Crazy, huh? Um, I told you guys, Trump's been trying to repeal DACA. He did try to do it. It was blocked in court. Apparently, they appealed it all the way to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court said, ah, no, you can't get rid of DACA, even though it was unconstitutional in the first place. And these dreamers, these illegal aliens who arrived here supposedly before they were 16, probably many of them lied and said, oh, I'm 16 when they're 18, 21. (laughs) They do that, you know. Um, He's been using this, he's been using DACA kind of in the dreamers as a bargaining chip because he said, oh, Democrats, I'll give, I'll let you keep DACA, but we got to build the wall and, and kick out the other illegals or something like that. And they're like, no. So I'm telling you, He's using this stuff to try to make great deals. It's not as easy to build the wall, deport the illegals, prosecute Hillary Clinton, or do what's sane and what's right as you think. Even the courts are against you. It's not just the radical media, the Democrats, the the rhinos too. His own administration is against him. Look at John Bolton. You can blame him for hiring John Bolton in the first place. Ill-advised. But John Bolton was respected in the mainstream for years on Fox News, and people other than like normal conservatives, not the ones who were like into really into getting digging like you guys, many of you guys do. I'm saying you guys, that you guys who've always not liked John Bolton. A lot of us thought, oh, John Bolton's a respectable person. So no doubt Boomer Trump, who was reading the New York Times every morning and watching Fox News every morning. Didn't realize what he was getting into maybe you got to cut the guy some slack Um, The rhinos his own administration the bureaucracies the FBI CIA DOJ are all against Trump so um, Like I said beware of the media the it is it is now almost like common knowledge that feds people who are federal agents try to infiltrate these things and try to entrap people into, like, doing terroristic threats and trying to build bombs and all this stuff. They do it to the Muslims and they do it to the right-wingers. And, uh, it's crazy. So they're trying to, um, cause problems. And many people, even by themselves, are mentally ill, even if they agree with, quote-unquote, what's right. And spiritually ill, really. Jesse Lee Peterson talks about getting over anger, getting past anger, so that you fight back in the right way to win, not be overcome with evil. Like Asmodor says, stay home this weekend, Juneteenth is Friday, and it will be crazy this year, he says. And he might be right about that. It's more than just Juneteenth going on, by the way. And remember, these prosecutions of these cops and all that stuff, 
This has been going on a long time. George Zimmerman should never have been charged with murder. Um, you know, there's this guy who's a, kind of a legal expert, you might say. I think he has a law degree. I could be wrong. His name is Ben Shapiro. He disagreed with George Zimmerman being charged with murder. He said the worst that you could charge him with is manslaughter. This was way back 2013, I guess, or 12 or whatever, whenever it was. He was, George Zimmerman is the one who killed Trayvon Martin in self-defense. It's a clear case, self-defense. You just have to presume innocent unless proven guilty. And there was no proof of guilt. And they overcharged him. And then he got off. And then what did they want? Riots. Uh, Michael Brown, the aggressor, the clear aggressor, they, but they lied and said, hands up, don't shoot. Al Sharpton was saying it, put your hands up. That's what Michael Brown was doing when he was killed by the cop. And Benjamin Crump, who pretends that he, he's about justice, never apologizes to the people he smeared, like George Zimmerman, um, former officer Darren Wilson, whom he smeared. These, these people in the media libeling and slandering these guys as so-called racist and all that madness. It's really evil out there. So beware. Anyways, I got to get to some calls. I am going to open the treasure chest on dlive.tv slash the hate report in a couple minutes. So let me get to, I have Nick and then my favorite caller, Maze. So we'll see Nick out of South Carolina. What's up? Hey, doing good, doing good. Hey, appreciate it. How you doing? I'm doing fine. Appreciate you. Thanks for calling. My pleasure. I just wanted to make a comment about uh, Confederate flags. Because yes. There was more than just one Confederate flag. True. There was multiple regiments. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the obvious one, the good old stars and bars, you know. Uh, like yeah. Like the hazard one, you know, I know people get bent out of shape about that one. Right. But in particular, that one, you know, especially uh, – what I'm referring to is it was a battle flag, right? right. That the, the Confederate soldiers would put out in the field, you know, for morale and and um, and the vast majority. I mean, most. I mean, the vast majority of Confederate soldiers didn't own slaves. I mean, they just right. They were there. Yeah, I mean, it was. I mean, it was sort of an elitist. It was. It was an elitist thing. Slaves yep. weren't. You know, they were. Uh, I hate to sound insensitive here, but they were. They, were, they weren't cheap. They're were expensive, you know. So <laughs> the plantation owners and yep. you know they would, they, and I doubt the plantation owners were out there, you know, risking their lives. Um, but the average Confederate soldier was just there protecting their their family and their from state. The union, yep, their state, their property. You know, I mean, you know, look at Sherman. Sherman went through Atlanta, Savannah, Charleston, burning down, raping and pillaging. Him and his soldiers were just. Sh was Sherman stealing. a northern guy? Oh, or yeah. southern he was part of the union. Okay. The union. Oh yeah, he was he was in the union. Yeah, uh, Sherman. Uh, 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 William Tecumseh Sherman. Um, okay. I forgot. He, he, I mean, he was. I forgot where he was, where, he, where what state he was from, but he definitely he was uh, general for the union. Yep. And, so uh, there were very was, fine people and evil people and violence on many sides. Oh yeah, yeah. It's yep. you know it was just, it was a messed up messed up situation and uh, and even when it came to the Emancipation Proclamation. That was mainly a military type political strategy. I believe the freed slaves had to go fight for the Union. It wasn't like, oh, you're just free, go ahead. Wow. The yeah, oh, the men, the men especially. They, I'm 100 percent positive they had to fight for the Union if they wanted to be free. So it wasn't just like, oh, you know, here you go. There's your, you know, your your your, you know, get out of slavery card for free. You know, they had to risk their lives too. So it was definitely a strategic move. It wasn't just out of the love of his heart. And I've read many letters where Abraham Abraham Lincoln called black people inferior and and he wasn't he wasn't this this angel of a man either you know um so you know I'm not saying that it was you know I'm, I, of course I'm glad that the slaves got free but people need to educate themselves about about history you know that you know the public schools don't teach you that kind of stuff you know that's and um but yeah the, you know the confederate flag it was just it was a battle flag for the confederate soldiers um, and they were just protecting the family. I mean, that's, that's what they were doing in the Confederate States of America. Yeah, and they, they, and the point of the war was to unite the country again. I mean, that's that I thought, yeah. right? He didn't want them seceding, so he fought to keep the the union. He want the he wanted the country. He didn't he say something like he quoted the Bible and said a nation divided it can a house divided against itself cannot stand, which is interesting because that's what Jesus said about Satan. <laughs> he yeah, said, "Can yeah. Satan drive out Satan?" <laughs> yeah, exactly, but, exactly. 
and the, and the Jews have a lot to do with the slave trade too. I mean, I've heard that. Uh, I, I don't know any of this stuff that you're telling me. I don't know oh yeah, about. I didn't know about Sherman. I didn't know about the slaves having to fight for the North or any of that. But the po yeah. the reality is, who cares? Who cares about slavery? The, they're so right. dumb to even kiss up to the notion that slavery was this horrific thing. The horrific things are happening today. Let's deal with those yeah. things. And they're being perpetrated by the people trying to take down the Confederate monuments. The ones, exactly. they're, they're for abortion, they're for, they're for, communism, which is what they're pushing, is slavery of the people. But they're and too dumb to realize it. And exactly, the dumbest thing about it is, the, you know, most of the people protesting, you know, to defund the police and abolish the police, they're the first ones that want to take your guns away. Yeah. Which, the guns are there to defend yourself from any sort of, you know, um, uh, you know, crooked cop or, or crooked uh, government, you know? Yeah. So they're, 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 they're fighting to take away the weapons, which we're trying to defend ourselves from. Yeah, so if you have the guns, then you, you have less need for police. <laughs> but they, exactly. Yeah. They, Anyways, they, man. They, they, I appreciate yep. it, Nick. Great call. Hey, call again. Thank you. All right. Will do. You know it. God bless. You as well. Take care. I got to get to Maze, my favorite caller, and hopefully Andrew and Christine. Hopefully. Maze, yes. what's up? Tell Nick to go study his history before he, he come on. And try maybe to you should go study your history. Well, let me <laughs> let me call tell you why I call. So you watched the Deuce of Havis. So you was watching the flag and everybody else, that, since, since y'all brain needs some help, they was watching the car. So what kind of car was it? It was the General Lee. It was. I mean, doesn't, I, wasn't it a Dodge it. Charger? I'm yes, looking at Joel as if he may my know. My cousin, <laughs> my brother, they went and got a Dodge Charger because they liked the way he was driving the car. Yeah. That's why they got had nothing to do with no flag. And, and you didn't care were, about the flag, right? What you say? You oh, didn't. The, you didn't care, right? We don't want to talk about the flag. We are just. But you the didn't car. care about the and flag. The Excuse me. You I didn't, don't care about the flag. Now. Thank you. But why do the flag Thank care you. so much about it? So can I can I get to my point? We want Green Acres and the pig cat more sense than the people, didn't he? And I don't. I, I never really people. watched Green Acres. I'm not familiar. I'm saying the new and they want to talk about the little rascals and all of that junk. And then we watch the Beverly. Don't Hillbilly. call little rascals junk. No, I didn't call it junk. I said the lady <laughs> that called it those shows the junk. Oh. And then we watched the pig on and go to go to Hollywood. We watched the Beverly Hillbillies and we watched all those and Tarzan and all these pictures. And who was in it? Just you all in it. Doing what? Was it making any sense? I don't know. Go to Hollywood and have more sense than a human. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't watch Green Acres. I don't well, know anything about this show. Green Acres. All right, I appreciate the, that the tip. And to the and to and to the laws, I want to know what do you think about these people being hanged and then they're saying that somebody they hung themselves. You know, wait. What do you think about it? I don't know. You don't know. So there's these so blacks that, that are something? there's these blacks that are turning up hanged, right? Hanged yeah. from a tree, mm -hmm. and. Some are saying, oh, it's a lynching. Others are saying, oh, they maybe committed suicide. We don't know. They're using that as an excuse. So tell them that's a part of their history. If you live up to your history, you won't want to repeat it. M Maze, do you know that lynchings were allegedly for rapes, robberies, and murders? Alleged. Do you know, what the jail do you know why jails was created? Jails were created for criminals. And what kind of criminals? And who was committing the crimes? A lot of blacks were committing crimes, I think. Oh, no, blacks were not committing crimes. <laughs> That's what I heard. Because black. That's what you heard. Yeah. But then that's not what you heard, no. And then you can use it as a fact and not what you heard. Okay. That's problem. I'm not interested in, in facts about history that because, because you because can't— your history. You guys, you, take a look at it. you guys can't interpret the present times, and you, you don't know yourselves. You can't interpret the present times. This is the present. They're hanging people now. They hung them Who's, they? They Who's, they? The Who's they? Who's they? Somebody. 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 I'm but you don't even you know. know. You don't even know. You're just speculating. And you don't want to have. You don't want to have about, have a, pro, a conversation about the guy, those guys, the other day that went in and killed these cops, and then one trying to start a race riot. Why don't y'all sit down somewhere? I don't know what you're I referring to. Right, Maze knows too much. She knows right, too, know much too much for her. You might want to hang me because I know a lot, right? No, My Maze, don't be silly. Me. I gotta go. You have a good day. All right. <laughs> what? She? She's such a mess. She jumps from story to story to story and speculates that uh, somebody hanged them when there's no proof. <laughs> Crazy. Black Phillip says, reminder, Hake and JLP on Killstream tonight in studio. I'll be there. We'll see. Appreciate it, guys. Christine and Andrew, apologize. I cannot get to you guys and the rest of you callers. 
But call back tomorrow. The Hake Report every day except for Saturday. 9 a.m. Los Angeles time. Appreciate you guys. Dan gave another generous super chat and says, Defund the Los Angeles Metro. $7.2 billion budget was approved for their fiscal year 2020. Less than 5% out of 10 million residents use the Metro. Can you say Democrat scam? Good point. Jib Jab says, sorry, Hank, my blackness took over me sometimes. <laughs> I didn't know you had black in you, uh, Jib Jab, but right on. He says, I'm going to throw a... Oh, no, I re already read that one. Appreciate that, guys. Yes, I do plan to be on the kill stream with the Ralph retort, Ethan Ralph, and the great Dick Masterson, who's the he's the one who created newproject2.com. Support Jesse on newproject2.com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. Or Patreon or Subscribestar. They all are great platforms, but New Project 2 is pro-free speech. Cool. All right, guys. Take care.